Welcome everyone to episode 10 things I hate about you. With me as always <laughs> is the Heath Ledger to my Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Robbie. How are you doing today, Robbie? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't call it 10 things I hate about real time. That would have been. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's right. I was trying to correct. tie it in somehow, but <laughs> I, I've, I've thought for the next few, I could probably do a few numerical titles. So. Uh, thanks for giving me the Heath Ledger role. I feel like you're more the Heath Ledger in this situation this time. Right? Well, I don't know if that's a burn or not. That's no, a good thing. It's a good thing. I, I, yeah. Um, I kind of went, he's the older character in the movie. Uh, so yeah. Okay, I kind of went that way. Yeah. Fair enough. So we'll crack into the news, shall we? Yes. So this just came out of left field, I think, when I first read it, is that Ed Asner wants Rob Zombie to remake The Sound of Music. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, so there's a real... There's, here's, let's unpack this com- combination of things here. So, like, Rob Zombie obviously has made and remade a few movies, including Halloween. Yeah. So I can see the idea of remakes. But The Sound of Music... And what does Ed Hasson have to do with it? Like, why Ed Hasson? He probably wants to pitch Rob Zombie to do it. I don't know. Does he want to roll in it? Is that it's possible? That's I really confused me. And it's like, what I want to know is if it's going to be the same as the original, or if it's going to be Rob Zombified with oh, his I'm, type of music. I'm sure it'll be Rob Zombified. I think that's the idea. The whole the whole dark element of it will be. I don't know. I I don't really. Who wants to see that? I don't know. I mean, Oh, it has no, obviously. A, yeah, it's, yeah, clearly it has no, but I don't know if anyone else does. Maybe it was just a throwaway line or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, you. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it's a random thing. It's yeah, very it's random. So random. Um, there was a Chris Evans tweet. Uh, sorry, not a Chris Evans tweet. A. Um, oh, I can't even remember what it was. A Collider tweet, sorry, went out saying, which MCU. Uh, actors do you want to see in a, in a star wars film and chris mm. evans had replied me yeah and i think that sort of set the internet sort of on fire which is funny because brie larson's been going on for ages about how she wants to be a jedi and she, oh, sure. every chance she gets she she can post something with her with a lightsaber she will yeah so she's clearly wanted to, it's, it's going to just be like an avengers reunion and a new star wars film oh, basically. probably well whether, whether it's another sequel or a prequel or you know, some sort of story that Disney want to throw out, they probably will get everybody back in oh, anyone somehow. Wants to. Yeah. yeah, I guess. You know, maybe they might make like a Knights of the Old Republic and have like a end game battle or something, you know? Well, see, and the whole relevance of this is obviously that Kevin Feige, you know, said he'll make a Star Wars. Yeah, film, or at least, be, yeah. be in charge of one. And considering they've also promoted him as like basically general overseer of all marvel studios or yeah something he's like just that. now like, like coo oh, or, yeah, something or something like that marvel now he's got so, a new role um and and on top of it like just like the importance of him as a person obviously to, to as far as disney's concerned like i can see that happening he'd be like we've got some solid talent that we've used before and we'd like to bring them back so yeah it's not it's not a normal possibility i'm glad evans is immediately like yeah i'm happy to jump into yeah. a franchise like i mean he, he's had his day in the sun of what six seven captain america appearances yeah. or so but he but no yeah, yeah. like any other opportunity he would get to probably play that role very briefly he'll probably yeah. still do it too, yeah, he'll is, come back in it's just pretty crazy so like you know um yeah i i i i wouldn't be surprised i honestly won't be no and speaking of the mcu they've disney and sony have finally got remarried and <laughs> Got Spider Man back. Yeah, so that, as, that didn't last very long. No, um, which was good. But as I said, it, it was the last time it could have been the next day, it could have been the next yeah. month, it could have been the next year, it could have been never. It, it was never going to be smooth. But you figured it. The pressure of um, everything. But apparently, Tom Holland had a lot to do with it too. Oh, so yeah. they had the D twenty three event, and he was just kind of like, "Look at all your fans at Disney who really want Spider Man back, and the like, you guys need to go back to the." table like and obviously the reaction by the fans and everything at the same time also helped so yeah i, I definitely think holland's you know the one that he, he was the glue that brought them back together mm, and, i'd say so and i read something online saying that the the breakup between disney and sony was like a couple going through a marriage of who gets the kid on the weekend sort of deal <laughs> yeah well i mean and eventually even the, they came back and if, yeah i was gonna say that still seems to be the case when they came back because obviously the percentage that they have profit to cost has been changed and there's probably other stipulations that yet haven't come out as i talked about last time too it'd be very interesting to see how this fits into the whole idea that obviously sony still wants to spin off this whole spider-verse kind mm. of thing but it seems like the traction is that maybe part of the agreement as well is that sony's are the sony's other characters that they've got 
maybe Marvel negotiated at least money for more access. Yeah. But that may mean that those characters that were potentially going to be separated from Spider-Man are now officially going to end up being part of the MCU. So Venom will eventually have that crossover and the yeah. Six and all these things that, that Sony wants to do can actually be part of the MCU but fully released by Sony. Mm. So that would be very interesting if that's the case. I wouldn't be surprised if that's part of the negotiations. Yeah, too. it'll be definitely one of the things they've come to terms on oh, just letting agreement. marvel yeah just letting marvel use the other characters that sony has that they hadn't previously been able to use put them in marvel cinematic universe films yeah. too so that would go, you know, kind of goes both ways i won't be surprised now speaking of the mcu we might as well bring this up now martin scorsese was ripping on the mcu saying that they're not cinematic yeah they're not experiences cinematic, yeah. yeah and francis ford coppola came out and said pretty much the same thing mm. Yeah, that just just happened yesterday. And, yeah, and Jennifer Aniston uh, pretty much said the same too. But her reaction was that uh, these big movies are making multi million dollars mm. with, I say a small amount of people, but it's still quite a lot of yeah. people acting in it. But it's not get letting other people, i.e., her, other opportunities for movies so it's kind of putting her out of work in a way well that was her reaction to i it. can kind of get that because i've had this conversation that we we literally are in this realm like I, it's, it's not an unfair her comedy is more reasonable yeah as an actress and i don't and people are gonna be like oh anderson you don't need money you've got friends dollars yeah, you got friends money <laughs> um no but which is true as well but that we accepted for the fact it's her like you could say that about a lot of actors and actresses like they are missing out on roles that aren't marvel aren't blockbusters because of this because there is there's this vacuum of of the way the film industry works especially in the last few years compared mm. to how it was maybe 20 years ago or even earlier where we're spending so much money on big pictures and we're making so many of these tent hole style but what was this that cost you know 150 200 300 million dollars that compared to the ones that we used to make well we i say collectively it's, it's the human race yeah <laughs> not us we're not that talented, we're not that talented. but uh, you know that we're like 10 or 20 million and you the studios used to make a lot more kind of these 20 20 uh, 10 20 30 40 million dollar pitches with various casts and now a lot of it's now a lot of it's more like independent films at very very small scale a couple million dollars or less sometimes to these big blockbusters and then the range of films between kind of your standard budgets between 10 and 40 million are kind of reducing in number so she's right there's actually some truth in it comparatively compared to like coppola and um uh, scorsese. scorsese thank you uh their comments <sighs> it's interesting like i saw james gunn respond yeah. to both of them and he's made really fair responses that i really do agree with which is that just that uh, for the for the original comments that uh scorsese made he was just like, you know, they said the same thing about some of Scorsese's films. And, yeah. You know, and I was like, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, you can have these different opinions about everything. You know, what's good, what's bad, what's good for the industry, what's bad for the industry. But the problem is, it's the industry. It doesn't yeah. make any difference. And I mean, like, Sam L. Jackson even came out and pretty much said that he, he didn't go on a big tirade or anything. He just said that Scorsese's movies aren't for everyone either. Mm. So, you and know, that's the same it's, it's for turnabout's fair play, really. And that's the same for, say, Tarantino, who Sam Jackson's been in lots of films. And, you know, I know definitely know that Tarantino films aren't for everyone. Yeah. You know, it's the same. You know, you can, you can say this about most filmmakers. If they're if you don't like that type of film, you're not going to like that film. Yeah. I think it just comes so much more critical because these are people that are kind of well-respected. Yeah. And that's what James Gunn got to in his second post, which is, you know, that there's this understanding of, like, people just think that, you know, if you're, you're yeah, I think he says, like, even geniuses get it wrong sometimes or something like yeah. effect and it's like you know he's implying the fact that they are really great filmmakers still that he's he understands that this is part of the, the reason why there's been such a strong reaction but yeah for sure uh just a few more things to touch on in the mcu yep uh tessa thompson and brie larson uh i won't say come out that's kind of the wrong word to use <laughs> here they're they're open you know this. they're open to valkyrie and captain marvel but uh being mcu's first same-sex couple now, I remember reading somewhere a while ago that I think Valkyrie was confirmed, unconfirmed as being either bisexual or a lesbian. I can't remember which it was, but it wasn't really played on in the movie, but it was just sort of there. So it's kind of interesting that this is, once again, come out now. <laughs> I can't avoid using that, that Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, I, I think this has been one of those constant discussions. And there was a lot of critical backlash to the scene in Endgame where um 
it was bloody one of the Russos too, um, playing the guy in the That's right, counseling yeah. group. And it they were like, his partner. It's, yeah, it's like, it's, it's like we've got to this point where the, 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 for, for that sort of community appeal, like, what am I trying to think? Of? Just say this is that the right way. They've, they've made an attempt, but it was a very lazy attempt rather than just actually making some of the superheroes yeah. part of that. You know, like it's, which is so much more sensible. Like, it's just simply the truth. Like, yeah. You, it's ridiculous. It doesn't have to be a thing. And this is the worst part of it. You make it. You end up making a song and dance about all this stuff. Like, just include it. Nobody needs to be. It, it should just be so inclusive that we don't even have to have this conversation. Yeah. That we don't have to say, oh, we should be having these characters. They should just exist. Yeah. Just make it happen and don't sort of you know force it to happen. Force just, it to happen. Just have it happen. It happen. And it's, yeah. That's just what it is. Like we we end up making a thing out of it. What I'm meaning is that it's terrible that we're even having this conversation. Like that we have to actively think we should have to passively think it should just happen yeah like, we shouldn't have to think about for these sure things in that sense yeah <laughs> yeah there's marvel she hulk which is going to be streaming on disney plus when that comes out uh now that's rumored to bring back Liv tyler's betty ross to the I, mcu i this is the first i'd heard of it surprising I, I had not heard about this where did you did you see this online i, I did yes i, I can't wow. remember what website i saw this on but i think it's rumor at this point but it'd be interesting to see if they do bring. I, I think Liv it's Tyler worth back. bringing it back. If for, not Liv Tyler, maybe just Betty Ross in general. No, I would say the sense would bring back Liv Tyler if they can, because they've got her, the same guy playing General Ross. Yeah. Um. So you know, it would make sense to bring it back. The only and then in the end, the only person they ended up recasting was Ed Norton. Yeah. But the funny enough, Ed Norton came out this week and said he would like to come back to the MCU as a villain. Yeah, exactly. I was going to get to that. Yeah, I, but I thought this was good timing. I just saw this too, so I was like, okay, Ed Norton. Yeah. Crazy man. You know, you, you, your last turn didn't really end that well, but... Yeah, all right. All right. Cool, we'll just put you in as <laughs> we'll go on else. with that, yeah. yeah cool. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens, I guess, yeah. with Ed Norton if he comes back. Oh, jeez. Now, we'll move on to some other news. You know, let me just go down my list here. Uh, Travis Knight, uh, the Bumblebee director, he was rumoured to uh, be directing Unch- the Uncharted film with Tom Holland, but it's now been confirmed. Yeah, it was confirmed. Yeah, I um I had a little double check of this because I wasn't sure, um, and it seemed to be on Variety. Said Travis Knight, director of Bumblebee, who directs Uncharted, film. the now sixth director to yeah. line up in that seat. I should ma- I start making a list of who the others are. I can't even remember no. who they all were now. Um, I'm sure if I looked at the article, it probably would say so. Yeah. Uh, good luck. That's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> like, Hopefully exactly. he stays on longer than some of the others did. Tom Holland's hanging on there. That's, that's yeah. good on him. Like, yeah. Good on him. They've still got the, uh, the core idea there, but um, yeah. yeah we'll fun. see what happens. Indeed. Uh, now, there was an article recently that um, Clerks 3, which we're both uh, highly anticipating, and we're currently going through some of the VSQ universe mm. movies at the moment to watch, that Clerks 3 is based on Kevin Smith's heart attack. Yeah, I mean, uh, to backtrack, Clerks 3 was supposed to be made, how many years ago? It was a couple of years ago they were supposed to shoot it. And it didn't happen because Jeff Anderson, who plays Randall, uh, didn't really like the way the story went. And apparently, even in Kevin Smith's own words, it's quite a bleak kind of Shakespearean thing, I think yeah. is how he described it in the end. And in the, in the, so it sounds like it was not going to be not going to end well no and so he wasn't very happy with it and he bulked and the film fell apart like literally a couple of weeks before shooting and smith and him basically had a falling out it seemed yeah. for a little bit over it and then a couple of weeks ago uh i mean smith had mentioned three or four months back that he was going to reappraise his idea for clerks three and hopefully reapproach but it just turned out that uh, it was about a month back he ended up going to this uh, collectible signing thing that they the people who organized had also organized anderson to come along and they yep. ended up having a massive chat and um so he approached him about the idea and it seems anderson's happier with that as an idea at this stage i mean he could still pull it out yeah. again but he probably won't at this point i would think um so yeah as you're saying it seems to be inspired that like randall has a heart attack similar to how smith, smith did had. yeah and he realizes what he's been doing with his life in this convenience store slash restaurant slash back to convenience store. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it'll, it'll happen, I'm sure. I'm, I'm, I, the response to um, Smith's latest film seems to be quite reasonably good, all things yeah. considered. Um, there's definitely one for the fans, by the sounds of things. But um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Now. I read an interesting article that Eddie Murphy wants to come back and do a Beverly Hills Cup 4. Yeah, he's no. he's having this re- career resurgence that seems to be like 
who I mean, he's, he's had this Netflix film do quite well. Yeah. The biopic. And uh, yeah, he's doing stand up again for the first time in a long time. Yeah, like 30 or so years. The um, he's been quite um, open about how uh, his stand up from the 80s probably doesn't really hold up in today's society. No. Murphy does it, and this the, the response to everything else he's doing is doing well. Probably going to happen. Yeah, it, it'd be interesting to see if it ties into. Wasn't there a TV show at some point, or was that only just rumored to go ahead? I can't remember now. With his son. Yeah, I think it was supposed to like be in like the first two episodes to like I think hand was, over the. I reins think it was a plan then. at one point before they didn't even made it. I think that was the idea. Yeah, but I wouldn't be surprised if the four if they make a fourth movie, it still incorporates some of that idea if it's still kicking around. Yeah, that it's he's quite got possible. Kid, yeah. you know, he's, but that's very shaft there was a shaft film that's right yeah i mean yeah it was really weird i watched it they had um they had samuel jackson in it playing shaft from 2000 and they had uh richard roundtree who played the original shaft in that version playing his uncle and then in the new version where samuel jackson's got a son they retcon it that he was lying about being his uncle and it was his dad all along so there's like three generations of shaft wow um yeah it was kind of weird (laughs) so hopefully they don't have to do anything well they're not gonna have to do anything like that so yeah so last time we talked about the matrix 4 coming out of whether who's going to be part of it and who's attached to it it's come out since our last recording of that uh yaya abdul maheen the second is cast in a lead role yep is in the matrix 4 as well as neil patrick harris yep and Jessica Henwick from the Iron Fist is rumoured for a lead role as well. So yeah. I, I suppose that would be opposite uh, Yaya Abdul Maheen. Yeah, I'm thinking so as well. Was this the one that it was I saw it was like um, actress cast in what sounds like a neo esque role or something like that? I Quite possibly, like a, yeah. So it would make I, sense. It's because... possibly going to be like a gender reversed role, whereas a female is going to be a neo and a male is going to be like a trinity or something. Mm. I would imagine. Well, I would be surprised at it either, actually. And I think Neil Patrick Harris could potentially be an operator. No, like on the ship or something yeah, or something. who knows he could be an agent for all we know mm-hmm. or a new form of an agent i don't know i don't know this is gonna be very interesting um Ken reeves came out saying it was was it ambitious or something like that i mm. can't remember i can't remember the exact quote but um i think people took that very as a very vague statement of, yeah and i think <laughs> confident. yeah with carrie Ann moss as well i think we talked in this about this the last episode of just what could potentially happen considering the fates of both characters at the end of the last movie mm, yeah i'd be very i'm sure there's going to be some some interesting twists in it for sure absolutely uh i read somewhere that i haven't seen this but adam sandler's murder mystery is getting a sequel on yeah. netflix speaking of it for aniston earlier, yeah actually funny enough should have um, tied that in there it's, no it's, it's all right i didn't even think about it either um yeah i haven't seen the i to be fair i I watched one Adam Sandler movie on the Netflix thing. I think it was Ridiculous Six. Oh no, I didn't. I watched the, I watched that, and I also watched Sandy Wexler, the oh, ancient yeah. one. And that's all I've watched. Yeah, I, I think I saw the one with David Spade where they fake their deaths. A do over. Yeah, that'll be it. Yeah, yeah it's, the, it's the only one I saw, and I was like, yeah. what is this? Yeah, I, I, uh, uh, Sandy Wexler was all right. Ridiculous Six was pretty much as title yeah obviously it was successful enough that netflix were happy yeah. to throw adam sandler some money so he can go have another money, holiday yeah. somewhere else yeah pretty much um because the last one was on you know beach i think or like a holiday resort thing um yeah good on him. yeah That's all i can say Might Great. as well see what happens yeah. Jennifer Anderson, you get another role there you go <coughs> you know you stop complaining about your marvel movies you're getting <laughs> netflix money now netflix money uh, she's but she's she's saying this and then she's doing the uh apple tv um morning show thing that's oh. launching there's that it's got like a quite a big i didn't cast even know it. this yeah and um so this is where i'm kind of like other other performers she's right about but not herself she doesn't she's not struggling yeah now we should move on to some uh dc news because i've got quite a bit here to go through all right well all uh right. I, I read something uh, a while back that the wb who currently have like arrow flash supergirl Legends and Tomorrow and all that on their streaming service. Oh, and Batwoman. Can't forget that one, the new one. That they wanted the DCEU characters for their crossover that they're doing at the moment, which is Crisis on Infinite Earths. Yeah. I haven't seen much more about that, so I don't think that's going to be uh, um, done. But what they are doing is they're getting all the other past like DC TV shows mm characters well most characters to appear in the crossover so it's including like burt ward from the original batman tv series they've got um 
Tom Welling and Erica Durance from Smallville. Uh, they've also got, uh, I can't remember her name, uh, is it Ashley, someone or other from the Birds of Prey TV show from the early 2000s as well. That, is, that, is it like the, the Dean Cain Superman as well? And Well, see, they probably would have used Dean Cain if they hadn't already used him in Supergirl as Supergirl's adoptive father. Uh, so he's technically already in that universe. What about Terry Hatcher? She's in that as well. Oh, she's, she's as, she's, what was she as? I, I think she was Supergirl's actual mother or her auntie from Krypton or something. <laughs> yeah, so they've so already they recast them. Yeah, so they've they recast can't. them. But so they can't, yeah. Yeah, well, see, they could, here's theory. the thing. They technically could because... They've used other actors for more than one role, haven't they? Yeah, well, they're doing that in this crisis crossover because Brandon Routh, who's already uh, played the Atom in uh, Legends of Tomorrow, is coming back as uh, Superman, but it's... Uh, um oh i've just gone blank on what superman it is he's like old superman where he's retired um oh i've gone completely blank on what this is <laughs> it's all right yeah he's he's so brenda routh has come back as superman anyway so there's yep. at least three supermen in this crossover oh, which is just insane um and unheard of so the so the it, but the thing is there must be just there must not just be people there must be must be other nods to this whole crossover thing uh, there is for sure i think uh, I don't think it's confirmed either, but I think uh, Robert Wool was it Wool Wool. Wool. I can't yeah. even find my notes on it here. Here we go. Uh, so he played Alexander Knox in the 1989 Batman. The, the reporter, yeah. Remember, yeah, the yep. reporter, yeah, across uh, Vicky Vale. Um, now he's apparently rumored to be in it as well, and there was an Easter egg of uh, a newspaper. I think it was a screenshot of a newspaper that said that Bruce Wayne marries Selena Kyle. Yeah. So obviously after uh the 89 batman, um, batman that obviously returns. happened batman yeah. returns yeah that happened and the picture of bruce wayne on it is michael keaton so okay, it's so interesting yeah. to see if maybe michael keaton appears as mm. the proverbial batman or, bruce or not wayne. Or, or bruce wayne even because yeah. you know i think i may have touched on this previously they've already got kevin conroy as an older bruce wayne may not be batman but it's an older uh, bruce that's wayne. i remember this yes so okay. yeah the, the i think the DCEU, uh, well, not the DCEU, rather, it's the wrong word term. Uh, WB are kind of being very optimistic with this crisis crossover, and it's just going to be insane for it, it's TV like the, viewers. It's like your, uh, when, when you do the animated thing, you can kind of throw characters in and you just yeah. get someone to a voice, which is really easy, and you can chuck background stuff. It's like being like that ambitious, but with live action, that's yeah. good on them. Like well, It's it's going to be across like four or five episodes of different things. So it's going to be like one on Arrow, one on Flash, one on Supergirl, one on Legends, one on Batwoman. Yeah. So it's like a five-part series. Jesus. So it's like the, the the Arrowverse have done this for like the past few years. Mm, I remember so, this seems the most ambitious of all yeah. of them, obviously. Because I think with Arrow coming to an end this year, that's they want to sort of go out with a bang, bang. Yeah, and make sense. it a, the biggest one possible. Makes sense. Now we'll move on to other DC news because you know this is it's TV and it's not really what you came here for. You came here to talk about movies. So it had a movie crossover <laughs> yeah, thing. There's yeah, a movie, it, movie it, reference in there. Um, Sorry, just give me a second. I'm going to find my notes. I don't I've know the TV stuff very well, so there I'm you glad go. you kind of know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Um, so we'll talk about the Batman. Here oh, we go. Yes. Talking about the DC. Batterson. Um, Batterson, yeah, of mm. course. Um, now, there was something that I read the other day as well that... Batman. Yeah, Batman, how, <laughs> whatever you want to call him. That, um, so the Flash 2 with um, the guy from Fantastic Beasts. I've lost his name. I can't even remember his name now. Who was the Flash in Batman Superman? Oh, oh uh, I can't remember. Israel. Thank you. Is it no, Bridger? He's from Star Wars. Um, yep, that guy. That guy. I can't remember his name. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well. So, yeah, so the Flash 2 movie. Ezra Miller. That, Ezra Miller, that's it. That's trying to remember. Flash 2 movie that the DC uh, want to do is apparently they want to do the Flashpoint Paradox, and this could introduce uh, Robert Pattinson as Batman, which would be an interesting way to introduce it. That would make sense. Because, well,. Yes and no, because in that story, Batman was Bruce Wayne's dad. Yeah. And in that whole story, uh, Bruce Wayne was the one that got killed in the alley. Yeah, but they can his, change yeah, these they can things. Change this it, is yeah. what I was going to say. It, it can be anything that they want it to be through the circumstances. Um, This would also be able to explain, say, maybe why you could have a continuation of Aquaman and Wonder Woman as they stand that's separated from the version that was in the Justice League. Oh, yeah. And it's a sensible way um there'll be a bunch of angry fans on the internet though no, who are all like 
you're sullying Zack Snyder's vision yeah that he never got to finish <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, it, and, it, and if they do explain like the why Aquaman and Wonder Woman can stand on their own mm. sort of two feet it'd be interesting to see if they're included in the crossover because uh in the crossover in the um Flashpoint Paradox because in that story they're both fighting each other the Amazonians and the Atlanteans mm, yeah. so that's part of that story so that'd be interesting that to would, see that would that be happens. a good way to do that to be honest yeah, yeah. so Jonah Hill was originally uh, rumoured to be cast as someone in it now, I read as Riddler and Penguin mm. you know I suppose skinny Jonah Hill could be Riddler easily but fat Jonah Hill could be Penguin <laughs> are but, we implying that he's just gonna like change his shape based on what the role well, was he, he's, he has kind of fluctuated in the last a, a little bit but he's but generally so, yeah. generally he's mostly stayed relatively yeah. skinny I heard the same thing um and then I heard that it was like was actually approached and then he yeah. passed that's what I heard it yeah. wasn't that he was rumored that that even happened it was that it did happen but he, he declined yeah I think he wanted too much money from what I heard uh, there's been some other um, castings on it too. So speaking of the Riddler, Paul Dano has now actually been confirmed as cast as the Riddler. Yeah, Dano's good. This. I, yeah. I, I'm I a reckon fan. that's a good fit. He's a good fit. He's a he's a good actor. I really do like him. And um, yeah, definitely yeah. good choice. And uh, Zoe Kravitz has been cast as Catwoman. Oh yes, I saw this because I saw um I saw I saw a comment. I didn't see originally that story, but what I did see was Michelle Pfeiffer's advice to her, yep. which is to make sure the cat suit has um the easy access so you can go to the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think that'd be like um, advice that most Batman would pass on as, as well. well. Yeah, I agree yeah, with that. Yeah. A giant one piece rubber suit. Yeah, not so easy to get in and out of when you really want to go to the toilet. No, I wouldn't imagine so. And uh, Jeffrey Wright has been cast as Commissioner Gordon. Oh, nice. All right. Wright's had been doing really, really well. Um, say West, Westworld, sorry. Um, but lots of other things as well. So, yeah, cool. Yeah. Good, good, good casting there. So, final uh, DC news here. Uh, Wonder Woman 1984 is apparently is going to be the first time you see her invisible jet. <laughs> I'm just like, drawing a blank. I'm like... Do we- I've, 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 all the things that Wonder Woman has, I've never really understood the invisible jet. It's never really gelled with me. No. And I'm thinking... It just ends up being silly, I think. I just remember, I'm thinking of all the stupid gags. Do you remember in uh, Star Trek Four, they had the, the um, cloaked uh, ship in the parked in San Francisco? Yeah. And they do all those gags about it, like being invisible and like people walking into it or knocking on it. Yeah. And then they climb up it, but you can't see it. Yeah. Yeah, I just see this sort of yeah, stuff happening. And it's set exactly in the right time period because that movie came out in 1984 as well. Yeah. It's, it's potentially, I mean, they, they could have like just one throwaway gag like that in there. I don't know. I'm, I'm no- <laughs> the, when I first read this, the one thing that came to my mind was, I think, a Family Guy gag where you see Wonder Woman in the invisible jet. And then I think Superman and maybe Green Lantern fly next to her. Yeah. And they're talking to her. But then she's like, oh, I'm just using the toilet. Toilet, yeah. <laughs> so I, I remember that as well. You know, I wonder if, you know, if when Wonder Woman actually goes in it, because I haven't seen any of it like in the comics, because I haven't read the comics of it, whether you can actually see Wonder Woman within it, if you know what I mean. That's based or on, that was what the original version was, yeah. is that literally she would, you'd be able to see her, but not the jet. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So I suppose we'll wait and see what happens with that. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> So I saw something here that was, I don't know why they want to do this. There was a Grease TV show announced. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Why? No, I read this as well. We were talking, were we talking about this last time? Like, like, wasn't it like High School Musical, The Musical yeah, or something? Yeah, but we were talking, I'm pretty sure we talked about Grease something, as well. Like, yeah. I'm just like, why bother? Like, I, yeah, I think that's sure what we, they want to do. They want to try and make it like High School Musical. I'm sure, I swear we've had this conversation already about yeah. Grease. I swear we've already had we this conversation. We probably have. <laughs> yeah. I just don't know why. <laughs> you're just so you're just so angry about it. We had to talk about it again. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. We'll we'll move on, shall we? I, th- I think the lesser said the better. Um, now, Cowboy Bebop has been Your beauty school dropout. <laughs> Go back to high school. Yeah, sorry, that's all right. Cowboy Bebop uh, has been filming in Auckland recently. Yes, it has. And I remember seeing it uh, a couple of weeks ago while I was driving to work. You could see it by the um, the Mercury Plaza food court there, just on a car park they're all lit up and look to be like japanese signage and stuff they've ah, put up so it, cool it, I, I could only assume it was for that yeah it would probably but, make sense but yeah but 
that's apparently now been shut down for six to nine months. Yeah. Uh, I, sh- I shouldn't laugh. But, no, you shouldn't laugh at um, all. Uh, so, John Cho was cast as one of the main roles, wasn't it? Um, John Cho's been in a lot of uh, movies of Star Trek and Harold and Kumar mm-hmm. and all that sort of stuff. Uh, he injured his knee, yeah. supposedly, doing a routine rehearsed stunt yeah, but- that they'd, take, they'd already rehearsed for quite a lot and done several takes and it was supposedly maybe one of the last of the not the last That's take why it probably would have been the last and uh, well it ends up being the last <laughs> yeah. anyway um that i shouldn't laugh at that either um so yeah so he ended up having to go back to the states and he's got surgery to repair the knee and it's going to be recovery time and um because he's so important to the production mm. they've ended up shutting down the role or shutting down the production for the amount of time with the intent of hopefully getting everyone back yeah which obviously is a hard ask because there'll be people with schedules cross over and yeah. so they'll just end up having to get who they can in some respects yeah, we're going to have local crew here that are working on it as well which well, they, some... they're going to have the time off for whatever the time slate was for now but then six nine months in time they might not be able to reschedule well i was going to say some of them crew and... some of them might have been going from that straight into uh, amazon's all of the rings for yeah, example, exactly yeah now that'll be a, a problem so they're gonna have to get new crew and then well i'd, know, say, I'd say I'd say if I if it was me and I was going from Cowboy Bebop to um, Lord of the Rings and I was going to miss out on something, I'd probably miss out on Bebop. I know it sounds horrible, but Lord of the Rings is going to be like solid number of yeah, years of work. For sure. You're not going to turn that down if you're going to be working on it. No. So. And I mean, it's, it's not only going to be the, the people that are working on it, it's going to impact like all the studios up here in Auckland as well. Yes, which set, if there's space. any sets and spaces that they had yeah. booked. And uh, I, it's not, I'm sure it's not an easy decision for any of the producers who are working on the role, on the production, but they obviously really want um, John to be involved yeah. in that role. Can't see anyone else doing it, so they're willing to do do it. And that's what, I mean, that's what they have insurance for as well. Yeah. You know? um, I mean, it's Netflix money, so. Well, it's not even just that. It's just about having the insurance and having that cover and having that planning. I mean, no, nobody obviously ever wants an injury, but sometimes these things happen. Yeah, like you it's can a plan. Freak accident. Exactly. You can plan for these things, and it can be just the way that he, maybe he landed or, you know, hit something or whatever. Yeah, we don't sure. obviously know exactly what happened, but it sounds like it was not. It wasn't like. We haven't heard like, oh, they're bringing in like a bunch of investigators to find out what happened. It sounds like it was pretty routine. It was just an unfortunate accident. For sure. We might as well talk about some trailers dropping now. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, yep, yep. Um, so RDJ, The Voyage of Dr. Doolittle is now just Doolittle. Yeah. That trailer dropped. Um, I'm really underwhelmed by that trailer, to be yeah. honest. I'm not really enamored by it. I don't know why we need another Dr. Doolittle in the first place, but that's not the problem. I look at that trailer and I'm just like, I can't really see myself being excited about it. I mean, maybe it's just for the kids. You yeah. Know? I don't know. I, it, I read somewhere that I think it's not a Disney film, but it's trying to be a Disney film. It makes sense. And I was sense. like, yeah, I can kind of get that vibe from it. Yeah, but like not a good Disney film. No. <laughs> no. Um, I, what is he doing with that voice too? That's the way I, I can't tell what that. It kind of sounds like it's him, RDJ being RD, RDJ, but it also kind of sounds like the Australian character he plays in Tropic Thunder <laughs> a little bit as a well. A little bit, yeah. I don't know. I yeah, mean, it's, go, it's I'll, give him of, minute, I'll give him a minute for the doubt. Yeah. So, what do you think about the Doolittle? That's. Yeah, I, I think I'm kind of with what people online have said that it's trying to be a Disney film, but it's not. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure you may go see it with all your movies watching that you're well, going no, to see. I, I've just bit. been, I've just been trying to. He's making a forward joke on the fact that when we go to talk about movies we watch lately, he's got none. I've got like yeah. all of the movies. <laughs> um, it's just because I said to you, like at the start of the year, I'm going to go and see a whole bunch. I'm going to try and see a movie a week, and I've managed to see more than a movie a week. I think at this rate, but I'm catching. Like I said, I'm catching up on the numbers. I think I'm. 39 from 42 or something yeah, so it's pretty good yeah i'm doing all right um so yeah i don't know uh, i don't know see what else is out when it comes out because yeah. i think as it drops next year i think it was as well like early next year yeah it does so we'll see what happens okay so other trailers on our list of we've got the king's man second trailer that dropped as well yeah it looks more interesting well, let's not, let me rephrase that it looks more Kingsman like than yep. the first Kingsman trailer. Yeah. Interesting is the wrong word. Yeah, it, it, the first one didn't look too Kingsman like, but this one definitely looks more like it. Yeah. I'm, I'm very interested to see where it goes. It doesn't answer our question last time about no. who the characters are. And if it ends up being who you thought it might be, then I'm still 
don't know how that works on a time scale, yeah, but they'll probably explain it odd. away if it was. But then again, they've got all this technology, so it could be like some anti-aging oh, who knows? sort of product or something. I don't know. I don't think. But, yeah. I don't think so. Unless he ends up with a, a dog called Mister Pickles. So, yeah, uh, I think it's going to be very obvious. Knows, so. Yeah. Um, there was a trailer was it released today or yesterday? I yesterday, think. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday of the Bloodshot trailer with. Uh, Vin Diesel yeah based based on a graphic novel comic book thing um, interesting idea I really like the idea of it mm. I mean I don't know if the movie's going to be any good it's just like a very generic action-y movie but the visual effects are pretty cool as yeah. well to be fair um, basically it, it looks like he's an ex uh, army officer and they've injected him with like this nano machines that essentially rebuild him whenever he mm. gets injured um, and he has these memories of like an ex partner being killed by someone but it looks like they've been implanted memories in order to be an assassination target and he goes on a path of revenge they found out that's how he's a usable target to make him feel emotionally connected to someone killing an ex-partner or something like that um until obviously he finds out the, the trailer shows way too much i think but visually it looks really cool okay yeah i haven't seen it yet so i might have to check it out yeah do so yeah i'm um, just briefly touching on vin diesel apparently um dwayne johnson and vin diesel himself have settled their feud so now hobbs is to appear in the fast and furious future uh, stop being a, someone stop being so, a candy ass is that what was the yeah uh, the ca- candy ass gate like that, yeah. that's what they were called i think that's what it was yeah <laughs> candy ass gate. But I, think, I, I think as you saw the other day it's a a bald guy teaming up with a bald guy to stop another bald, bald guy. guy. So, well, that was that was that was specifically the movie with Jason Statham in it. Yeah, but now now it's the bald guy teaming up with the other bald guy and the other other bald guy to, to take down someone, someone else. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so we'll see what happens in the future <laughs> Fast and Furious movies if there's going to be more. There probably will be. Mm, very much so. So we'll move on to some other news, shall we? Yep. Uh, so there was Zombieland 2. There was original cameos that you brought up to me. Yeah. Which I don't I, think I knew about. Okay, so we talked about this before. There was a long-standing rumor that um, Dan Aykroyd was going to be a cameo a lot because Bill Murray was a, the big cameo in the first Zombieland that um, Dan Aykroyd was going to be a cameo in the second. Turns out that's not accurate. I've seen the movie, so, and I'll come back to that later, but he's not in it. But the directors come out explaining why that rumor persisted, which had actually to do with a very early draft that was written not actually very long after Zombieland, the first Zombieland was out. And some of the bits that are in the version that came out just recently were used in that draft. Um, But one of the things was that there was going to be a flashback scene with Bill Murray and the other cast members of Ghostbusters playing a game of golf. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to be set at the time that the outbreak happened. And the uh the whole gist was that dan Aykroyd and the other cast members were supposed to be trying to convince bill murray to come back and do ghostbusters 3 and this included how ramus because he yeah. was still alive at the time so i ernie hudson as well um and then just as they're talking dan Aykroyd starts like being sick and turns into a zombie and then bill murray has to kill him yeah um and then the same thing happens to the other cast members of ghostbusters and that was ex- to explain how bill murray kind of ended survived, up, survived the, 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 the start of the zombie apocalypse it was an interesting idea and it kind of ties into the new movie a little bit but i don't want to say anything more because it kind of ruins it but yeah. the, you if you stick around for the credits you'll understand definitely but yeah it was interesting i thought um yeah what could have been had yeah. they got the movie out in a couple sure. of years rather than 10 years later no there was some news here that uh, robert forster died at the age of 78 yes um forster's had a re- career resurgence thanks to queen tarantino casting him in jackie brown um but he was a very prolific actor mm. he kind of but he did it was very indebted to tarantino kind of giving him a second life i you you, you would have seen forster in a lot of movies even modern ones and not realize he's the police captain in um me myself and irene yep. and like uh yeah it, um he it's so, so crazy that it's it's so it seems so fitting essentially when you watch something like um once upon a time in hollywood where you see the reverence that tarantino has for these actors that were big in a tv or a movie sense for a little while like yeah. the, especially in the 60s it or, sort of and it kind of phased out because they ended up being and forster was exactly one of those guys that he talks about in that movie that they talk about in the movie that Tarantino himself has talked about when he was talking about the press tour in that movie which is that he was um he was quite big he did a couple of big things and a tv series that was quite successful and then kind of ended up being like the heavy in these of you know the bad guy in a lot of one-off episodes or a couple of episodes yeah. here or there on certain shows and eventually his career kind of faded off and um 
yeah it, this just it's a uh, it's kind of interesting too i i would suspect if for, maybe Foster was not very well but i'm surprised even tarantino didn't even give him a role in that to be quite honest thinking yeah. about it now it would have been quite i'm um, fitting to have him come in as some sort of um director or someone in the role or a, just small, yeah. small yeah he may have actually to be fair considering the amount of stuff that was cut from that movie they, who knows yeah that might be the case but um yeah definitely so this this is something that uh, you'd sent me the link to. Yeah. Uh, David Harbour, who played Hellboy in was it this year's Hellboy. Movie? Yeah, and yeah, there's been Stranger Things yep. and lots of other things. So he hosted SNL recently, mm-hmm. and they did a Joker parody called Grouchy. Was it Grouchy? Grouch, or was just Grouch. Grouch. It was just Grouch. Where he effectively plays Oscar the Grouch in human form. Yeah. Now I haven't seen Joker, but watching this, I pissed myself laughing. The tone is so the tone good. is good. The tone gets the the style right perfectly. Um, I mean, you you can tell even if you've seen the trailers for Joker, like you yep. you can see the the, the the semblance of it. Um, it's it helps that they've obviously being that Saturday Night Live is in New York, they're able to go to some of the shooting locations from yep. the movie, especially the, the iconic stair shot of him dancing on the stairs. Yep. Being able to recreate that on the actual set of stairs probably obviously helps. But just like the the, the the grade and the cinematography and the style to it, um. But then the the, the jokes are hard, are fast and furious and they're quite they hit hard and they're very good. That's probably one of the best Saturday Night Live filmed movie sketch sketch funds i've seen for a long time yeah. to be honest it reminds me more of something that Saturday Night Live doesn't do very often but like no. mad tv used to do quite yeah. a lot of to yeah. varying degrees of success i think that's what we said Night live is slowly coming back to as well like i think they used to do it a lot sort of in the 80s and 90s but then they sort of just went away from it mm. but they're sort of coming back to what made snl snl in my opinion, yeah, it, it, tonally, well, slowly but surely. So, tonally, this is getting this is this is hitting it out of the park. It, like it just got that thing right, and it's a good casting choice too to yeah. to pitch the whoever pitched that um in the in the reads for the joke the joke reads and pitched that idea and got it through. Good on you, yeah, like, honestly, well done. well done. And the, the fact they managed to make it work as well because it could have fallen apart if it was done half assed but they yeah. pitch perfect. Now we'll move on to some Star Wars news because we've got quite a bit here. Yep, trying to do as much as same new, similar news in blocks now dennis lawson who was uh wedge antilles in the original star wars trilogy so 456 new hope empire and jedi for those playing along at home um he's coming back in rise of skywalker he'll be much older obviously as always because it's you know 40 or so years later and he is much and older because it has been 40 or so years yeah, exactly later. as well so <laughs> I think the last time we saw Dennis Lawson was would have been in Rogue One in um, unused footage for A New Hope. Oh, yeah, we were just talking so, about this because it was on TV okay. the other night. Um, yeah. yeah, so... Um, It'd be interesting to see someone back. Yeah, it's a good idea. Like, it's, it's just, it seems like a fitting thing. I mean, yeah. I'm just think, I'm just trying to think about the the fact that like this like yeah we we the re- rebellion is so spread out across the universe it seems in the yeah in, I, by, I, by I think that's point. probably where they're going to because otherwise he probably would have been in the last two movies yeah or killed the in the, the last two movies yeah like so Akbar was yeah so they, they've probably just you know he's been somewhere you know on, in a small remote area communicating with the resistance mm. so it'd be good to see a, a somewhat familiar face back and. Or another familiar face, yeah. Yeah, and, and especially I think we touched on this in the last episode too with Obi Wan uh sorry, Ewan McGregor coming back for an Obi Wan T V series and um Dennis Lawson is Ewan McGregor's uncle. Yes. So of course, you know, bringing it back with family as well. So that'll be a nice touch too. Mm, very much so. Um now old nine I olden Aaron Reich. Gotta get that right. Yep, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah you're right. You, yep. you got that. Perfect. I was going to say it's <laughs> um, not easy. Now, he's so. expected to return as Han Solo in future Star Wars projects. No, I, How I, do I you feel about that. I, I'm fine with it. I, I didn't mind his casting. I think the problem was that there was so much expectations. There was, there's this mixed thing of expectations slumped upon Solo, but also the whole point of like, well, I was, which was like, what's the point? Yeah. But now they've done it. It's like, well, yeah, it makes sense to bring it back. I'm still convinced it would be much better to continue the storyline in a TV miniseries yeah. kind of thing for, yeah. for Disney Plus. They probably will. And I think they will. I think it would make much more sense. Or, or a movie, but it's a Disney Plus movie. I, yeah. I just think at this point, making another feature film, it, it's probably not going to yeah, work. Just, there's just the kind of mess that that was. You're probably better off doing it in installments yeah. like the Obi-Wan series is yeah. going to be. And it means it, and it gets to be as cinematic as the movie was. It's just on a different platform. Yeah. I, I think that works well. And, and considering 
Um, there, was, there was a screening to some press earlier this week. I think it was about 27 minutes of the Mandalorian series. Yeah. And the, the response to that's been through the roof. Like the press were all like, there was people there that were like, I'm not even really a Star Wars fan, but my God, that looked amazing. Mm. Um, you know, so if they can pull that off on a platform that's, you know, that's launching Disney Plus, there's no question that they can make it cont- look continual to the film that was released and, and still bring back all the same actors they need oh, to sure. and everything like that. Bring back or, or Woody. Oh, no, you can't because no, can't bring him back, can you? <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> sorry, I just really enjoyed Woody Harrelson in that movie. But, Spoiler. Yeah. yeah, sorry, spoilers for that. If you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen the solo movie. <laughs> yeah. Woody Harrelson's... He's good at that movie, yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah. I'll give you That's that. probably why I forgot, because he was so good at it. Yeah. I enjoyed him in it. You can just go watch and, Zombieland 2. Yeah. 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 He's, he's got a career resurgence as well, speaking of all those. Well, I kind and of, but he's never of... really never gone away. He's just always... But yeah, there is yeah. this period of time, but he's never really... He's just always kind of... Come tri- and gone. Come and gone. Yeah, he's, he's always there. He's just... Yeah, he's just maybe there. we anyway. just need a Cheers reunion. <laughs> yeah, good old Woody. <laughs> um, now, the Rian Johnson Star Wars trilogy is in question. Well, yeah, was, I think that's been up and down for a while. It was only because um, somebody asked Johnson on Twitter like what the pro- progress was, and he's and he, he, the way he answered it made it sound like it still it was always in question. Yeah, like it was never a confirmed thing. Everyone just took it as like he's making a trilogy. I think the reason why it, maybe it's more in question is the same reason why is just Disney's gotten skittish about too many film sequels and the mixed critical not critical but fan response to mm. last jedi I, I the thing is the thing that makes me maybe more upset about this is that clearly you've got to put it in the context that originally this third movie was going to be colin trevorrow yeah and he got axed before the movie even got started yeah like it's have some conf- have some confidence in disney to make some decisions i guess about johnson like I, but this is what I've talked about with so many people. With the Star Wars, like I, and it's going to happen again with the new one. Let's be honest. So J.J. Abrams makes The Force Awakens, and people complain it's too much like the original. Then Ryan Johnson makes the something that's quite opposite, but like still in the universe, and mm. people complain for about it being too different. Yeah. I'm like, you can't win. Like, what do no. you want? Do you want it more of the same? You want it more to be different? What? Do you, you, there's not a comfortable middle ground to that idea. It just is or it isn't. As long as it's still Star Wars, like that's. And to me, neither of those films didn't feel like they weren't Star Wars. Like no. they were Star Wars movies. They felt like Star Wars movies. I just want a thrilling adventure that is exciting and fun, and the characters yeah, are good, and the story takes universe, and it's like yeah. it's part of the universe. I, I, I don't understand the. But I've never understood the backlash. I I walked out of last year going, yeah, that was great. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Yeah, I, I was the same. Yeah, I don't understand it. But you know, everyone's got their own opinions. I which is fine as well. Like, yeah. I don't mind that. But just you have to accept what's in front of you. Like it's like the same people petitioning for <clears throat> um, the Justice League cut. It's like Warner Brothers could release it and it will be fine, like an unfinished work print or whatever of. Um, but it's not going to solve the problems. It's not going to make the movie better. It's no. going to be an unfinished version of a film. Like it's just going to be a different version. I, I just don't understand. Like I understand wanting to see it, but I don't understand the f- the f- kind of f- fever behind it. You know, like how excited people are. That's my rant. Yeah, that's all right. That's fair, cool. <laughs> I think that pretty much nails it on the head anyway. But it can be creative. Like, Ryan Johnson's been quite his vocal on the internet, let's be honest, yeah. which is part of the problem, I guess. Um, but, you know, he 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 just was like, you know, I'm going to do something different with it. It's my yeah. chance to do Star Wars, and as long as the studio's happy with me doing it, then I'm going to do it. And he did it. It's fine. Yeah. And I mean, in the very least, I mean, I won't complain if it's a Disney Plus TV series or something. No, you know, well, he's especially if it's as... planned out story, let's make it three seasons or yeah, something. Yeah, especially know? if it's as good as like these other ones are looking like they're going to be. Like it's just yeah. like in the sense of like, and when I say good, I mean like craft wise. If it looks like it's going to be like what a film would be on the Disney Plus, who cares what platform it's going to yeah. be on? The fans are going to want more Star Wars. They'll get it. Yeah, and then they'll complain about it. <laughs> and later. then they'll com- exactly what I was about to say. And then they'll complain about it later. But, yeah. you know, whatever. Speaking of complaining. <laughs> uh, Hayden Christensen uh, is rumored to return as Anakin Skywalker in a Darth Vader prequel series for for Disney Plus at this point, I guess. All right, no. the, the, let's say why. That's my first thing. Why? Yeah. Why, what like, does we did we need this? I, I, we I, we talked about this a little bit because we saw the end of Rogue One again the other yeah. night, and I really was aghast at the tonal inconsistency. I still am. It's an awesome scene. Don't get me wrong. So, so you give darkness, you can hear the breathing, the lightsaber appears, then he starts throwing guys around, he yeah. stabs people with this lightsaber. It's awesome. 
but it doesn't match at all mm-hmm. with the tone of what how vader appears no the, the, f- the first time you see him in a new hope what the hell like it, it doesn't would, match it wouldn't match it doesn't match it would actually make more sense for him to do what he does in rogue one at the start of for if that was where George Lucas was thinking at the time, yeah. it's not at all, and obviously the technology wasn't in that ability to do it either. Because at that point, he's actually on board the ship with the princess, so obviously at this point he can take personal responsibility, but he doesn't. So if he doesn't there, why would he do what he does beforehand? Yeah, like it doesn't and kill people to get the plans back. back. It doesn't. It just doesn't work. And I this is what I feel like if you make a prequel series. It's just going to be entirely inconsistent with where we go, like all over the place. Yeah, and like one question I want to ask is like, why does it have to be Hayden Christensen? Because if it's going to be a prequel series of Darth Vader, presumably between um, Revenge of the Sith and I suppose you could say Rogue One now. Yeah, since that's now canon instead of A New Hope. Does it have to be Hayden Christensen? Because I mean, is this a person in a suit and it'll yeah, be James Earl Jones's voice? Yeah, it's going to be James Earl Jones and just somebody in a Darth Vader suit. But why does it have to be Hayden Christensen? Like Hayden Christensen, even the right size compared to how um, David Prowse was, yeah. that was part of the problem. Well, they had to create the suit in Revenge of the Sith for Hayden, Hayden Christensen because he said, "Oh, I want to make I'm it authentic. authentic by being in the suit." Yeah, yeah. which otherwise they would have put someone else in the suit for that scene. But like, you're probably not even going to see vader with his helmet off much anyway i mean you kind of do in rogue one i mean maybe that's back to tank literally barely see i was gonna say literally that's it i mean it might be a case of like if you get hayden christensen back to do this he's literally only gonna do for the scenes where he doesn't have a mask on for like say it's a series say there's like eight episodes you might see him twice just for particular reason and they and you just see this excuse me the side of his face or the back of his head and it's it's like all burnt and scarred but it's like what you know why can you not just put someone else in there like i don't know why don't you why don't you just put like the boy who just set up the lights in there or something you know like one of the gaffers or something <laughs> doesn't, doesn't really make much difference now no I but i don't know so as of this recording we're expecting star wars episode 9 trailer the second one and possibly final one it will the be the final one yeah. small teasers and tv oh, spots yeah, here of course there. yeah but the first the, main, the last major trailer yeah, yeah being a month away so hopefully it comes shortly before we can see it, when we can see it yeah i uh, i they just keep dropping teasers for this bloody thing yeah thanks you, you're 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 extremely excited you're i, on, I really am you're like i'm on tin hooks i really am <laughs> was, well, there was a five second teaser yesterday saying that it's dropping tomorrow and then there was a 15 second one this morning saying it's coming today and i was like come on just, <laughs> just give me the trailer just give it to me now come on just, come on give me the turbo man doll <laughs> <laughs> That's um, how I feel. It, Give me the trailer. It, it, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was not expecting that one. You, you just want the movie. Why would you want the trailer? Just give me the movie now. It's a month away, but you just give it to me now. now. But the trailer and then the movie. Oh my god, I can't. To, yeah, I, to whet my appetite. I feel like I feel like uh, when we get when we're like the on the day of the movie release, I should start filming you all day, just getting you like pacing <laughs> just around the whole and, thing. Yeah, yeah like, I'll, I'll be like counting down the minutes. Yeah, going, huh, come on, it's like wait, 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 like you'll be like, and come on, get we yeah. get to the car. It's <laughs> we like, gotta go. Bro, she's like, it's five hours away, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to get in line for the popcorn. Oh, Got to get my drink. Yeah, my two liters of coke. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I'm hoping they do. I was going to talk about this. I will be referencing it. The, they're doing the marathon in the States of all yep. nine main movies. I would do that here. Yeah, I would. 27 hours, give or take. Um, yeah, I'd do that. Yeah. I've done 24 hour movie marathons. Oh, Jesus. Sorry. Right. Yeah, it's all right. It's hungry. It's fine. It's hungry for Star Wars. Yeah, I am. Um, no, I'd do the 27. <laughs> I'd do the 27 hour thing. It's, uh, it seems it seems still would be a good reason to rewatch the movies. Plus, I could fall asleep through some of the prequel movies. Yeah, especially if they dislike. Especially if they put them in as four, five, six, one, two, three, and yeah. then seven, eight, nine. But they probably won't. They probably put them one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven, so you've got to you got to bear the brunt of those terrible movies first. Oh, stay for pod racing and uh, and Darth Maul fight. That's that's about it. For yeah. the first one, yeah, you uh, come in late then probably could come in late uh yeah i just sleep rather the rest um get comfortable have a nice comfortable seat uh yeah you get get one of those day beds that they put yeah. in the event cinema that's right yeah you'd have one of those yeah, for have, sure. a, have a good nap yeah, I'd, probably, I'd, be more, blanket. I'd be more worried about falling asleep the one in the states they give you a blanket you get a, oh. you get a, a like the blanket i don't know what's how good it would be quality wise if you buy on the tickets they apparently give you like a bunch of collectibles including like the a blanket which makes sense like yeah it's a good idea but yeah, I definitely always take a blanket in. I never do. I I don't never take one into the twenty four hour movie marathon, um, and that was a mistake. I think the year that I went with you years ago, yeah. 
we were right remember we were right by the stairwell 2012 or 2011 we were right by the stairwell yeah. remember I was right by the stairs I was yeah, freezing right. yeah you get like, the draft coming draft up. coming up but now the, the cinema's warmer than you said they put heat, heat pumps and stuff it was nicer in there um, and last year I was warm the whole time it was never cold so yeah. Um, but yeah I would take, sensibly take a blanket polo just in case mm. Mm. but yeah find somewhere on the floor to sleep yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah well they used to, remember there was a person who slept on tried to sleep on this right, spare yeah. seats as well yeah yeah don't think people I could do, do that. crazy things just tired sleeping in the aisles that's yeah. not dangerous at all no especially in the dark because someone can trip over you <laughs> <laughs> moments later the force will be with you always So we've just had a pause in, in recording and we've just seen the new Star Wars trailer. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I'll admit, I cried. That's fine. Tease me if you want. Give me shit. I don't care. <laughs> I um, really enjoyed it. I, I'm not going to tease you for that. It was, uh, it was a really good trailer. I really enjoyed it. I didn't I didn't get as emotional as you, but I'm not no. as... A, I like Star Wars, but I'm not as invested. I'm just thinking of a Star Wars t-shirt. Um, I'm not as invested in, as, as you are. No. I don't know, to some degree, but I still really do enjoy the franchise. Um, but I, it just let me... I'm, I, I liked how it didn't really spoil a lot, which is nice. I was worried that we were going to show off too much. But yeah. It gave me way more questions I, than answers. Yeah, I think a lot of people were like, okay, the first trailer gave us the Palpatine laugh. Mm. Will this show us Palpatine? And yes, it kind of did, but kind of didn't. It sort of showed you, I guess, the sort of the back right of him and his hood. And he's on like some sort of mechanical spider or something. Yeah. Or it could just be a random high shot. Like high he's shot, on a hill yeah, or hill something. Or something, or something like something. Ray. I, <laughs> spider. I was just, well, I was thinking, I'm just, I'm just thinking of Kevin Smith talking yeah. about the mechanical spider. Well, well, Darth Maul came back as a spider. I know, yeah. That's so, what I'm thinking. Um, you know? Um, yeah, I, I think it's more about his the impact of him being involved is is more hinted at and there's like a, a heavy weight in the trailer but it's not with blatantly showing him yeah just enough voice just enough hint of obviously his involvement and leaving it yeah he's there mystery, then, yeah if, let's hope that they, they don't go snoke on him and just have him in there but then kill him off in like five I, minutes i don't think so i think it'll be too important to the, yeah. to the narrative i think there's a there's a lot going on there's a the, visually there's a lot going on i mean there, there's a lot of um really intensely yeah like uh, I'm, my, my only concern, and, and this is not coming from a from from a from a background of like what I see in the trailer. It's not a thing. It's just that thing, you know. I'm trying to think of a good way to word it, because when you when you put way too much emphasis, emphasis on the fan service of trying to yeah. make sure you cram too much in, um, just to make people go see it, go, hey, here's all this stuff you well, enjoy. Yeah, and not just that, but that what that sort of impact it has on the final film yeah. as well. Um, yeah, because you, 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 I'm just trying to think. I mean, the, the other thing that would be very interesting if there's any, if they've pulled the same thing they did with Avengers and they've put a couple of shots in there that won't actually end up in the. Uh, yeah, fi- or they're final film. Or potentially altered or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. They, they don't overly look altered or they could be altered. Like, I think everything they've shown could potentially be in there, but you could be right. There could be something they've cut out. Yeah, I, I think it's more to do with them. Um, I don't think they'll alter stuff. I think what was in there feels like it's all stuff that's from the final cut. Um, it's just about whether or not some of that stuff is was before that cut was locked and whether or not it's going to be changed or it might be a different angle or whatever um, or it's just been put in for to invoke that mystery yeah. that I was talking about but but it's a solid looking trailer and, and you know it's a it's nice to get um, some semblance of like scale and growth to everything yeah. that's going on and yeah it's um there's definitely going to be some epic battles as well oh for sure it's definitely got Return of the Jedi type vibes to it definitely as well yeah, yeah so it's probably sure. gonna harken back to that of how force awakens did for a new hope mm. yeah and then yeah, sure. last jedi just was no empire but we won't go into that <laughs> yeah but th- this is what i was saying to you before like you know like maybe people will revisit these and, and you know once all, all the dust settled years on from now and they'll look at this trilogy similar to how we look at the original trilogy yeah and that you know the the because we see so much keenness of familiarity in that first movie to the first of the original of the original film and then how the second episode went quite dark and it ended up being everyone's favorite but it wasn't like everyone thinks of it as like being exceptionally well received which it was yeah 
but it also was critically there was some critical response to that sequel as well at the time like not to the obviously the we didn't have the internet in no, 1980 not the scale it would be now but you know there was still the, the discussions around it and, and and the fan base and all that sort of stuff and then there's obviously some good and bad consider about the third of the, the films depending on your outlook on ewoks yeah um you know and, and some of the decisions there are made visually too like i think there's parallels here because they're all re- like this trailer and the other two movies they all look really good but there's yep. definitely a unique style to say ryan johnson's visual style that if you want to put that parallel onto the original trilogy there's definitely a visual style that was put into the second film with Kirshner yeah that lucas didn't have and that um uh, who did mark Hans did the third yeah. one um didn't have and you, i mean you can find a million video essays that talk about this the sort of lighting techniques and the the way sets were, were approached and the visuals and the camera choices and all that sort of lens choices and camera decisions and all that sort of stuff that um, this didn't exist in either of the other two films. One, mm. Lucas, the first film because of Lucas's budget and time. The third because Lucas just wanted to get it done and he yeah. kind of was like the, the shadow director on it, whereas that didn't happen with Empire. So no. it'd be very interesting to see if those parallels continue to kind of almost be evoked through this new trilogy in hindsight. I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, I, as I said, don't mind Last Jedi. So. No, no, I'm the same way. I, I didn't mind it either, but I just think a lot of people just aren't on board with it and they don't. Like, because I think we talked about it in previous episodes. There was like a hashtag, like, take it out from the saga or something or get it removed well, or something. And then people wanted to get it re- yeah. recut or redo it. And it's yeah. like, well, no, like, that's just that's a, some, some level of absurdity, really. Like, yeah. you just have to accept that's what it is and that's what it is. If you don't like it, you don't like it. It's great. Oh, yeah. I but mean, that's like, just what it is. Yeah, and we, like, I don't see in the early days of the internet, like, hashtag boycott Jar Jar or cut Jar Jar out or something, you know, yeah. something ridiculous like I mean, that. Even though everyone didn't like him, like, none of that happened. Yeah, you're and right. Now we're in an age where... You know, the small thing pisses everybody off. Yeah, to the degree where we have internet p- petitions and yeah. all this sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, sure, people, there were people who didn't like Jar Jar, and I'm sure there's people who would have been like, yeah, get, it would be great to have him out. And then obviously later years there's been cuts of the film or the trilogy, yeah, the prequel trilogy, that has kind of exe- excised bits of the story. But I think maybe it was easier to just look at those films, especially the first one as being such a, like, as far as at the time, abysmal failure because yeah. everyone just looked at it and went, ugh. There's all this, just, oh, there's all these, the, what, what's this thing? Senate stuff? Ugh. Yeah. What's Jar Jar? Ugh, this. Ugh. Like, th- there's a lot of things to be complaining about. So, uh, but then that's the same thing. Like, oh, is that, like, Lucas just screwed it up, do it again. Yeah. yeah. Nobody was saying that. Just people yeah. just went, oh, it's just, just George Lucas' thing. He chooses to do it that yeah. way. It's gonna... the same with Lucasfilm as it exists under Disney. The executives, the producer, the director, they make their decisions, and if they all agree on making those decisions, that's just how it is. Yeah, that's them. They've got to make those decisions and sleep at night with them. Well, yeah, but that's, they shouldn't have to worry about it either. No. At the end of the day, it's just a piece of entertainment. Like, it's a yeah. movie, and the fans obviously just get a little bit too riled up. Yeah. I mean, it's all good to be passionate about stuff, but you don't have to be bang for blood or... No. No, it's, it's just a bit over the top, I feel. Yeah. I mean, the, the end of the day, I mean, the other part of it, is, which is ironic, is that at the end of the day, all those people that have said they didn't like last year are still going to get sick this. Yeah. Because they want to see how the trilogy finishes. They want to see what Abrams is going to do coming back to the thing. I said before, you know, I'm happy it's not um, uh, Colin Trevorrow because I'm not a fan of Trevorrow's directorial style. He he is he's fine. Like he's a, yeah. he's a he's a workman director, and he does perfectly fine things but if he had directed i'd still be going to see it i still would have been yeah. like fine you know personally i'm happy because he's not doing it but you know that's my personal that's opinion but i yeah. don't i'm not telling people oh well you know if he was directing it well someone else needs to yeah, I'm it. remake the film yeah. with someone else you know yeah you know, it's a bit like saying well i want a different there should be a different director for each of the movies why is abram's back no. yeah right we should move on <laughs> The rent over. <laughs> right, we'll move on to some reviews, shall we? <laughs> Pretty much, this is where I'm silent for like 10 is or so it, minutes. How's and... this any different than you? <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> so, you, you can listen to Robbie talk about all the movies he's you, seen. You ask me questions. Yeah. I, this, let's get you involved. Just right. ask me questions about it. So, just we'll go through the list exactly as it is, because this is exactly the order I saw them in. 
As far as like, yeah, this is exactly the order I saw them. So you, you just ask me questions. You, All right, I'll try to. Yeah. Then, then we'll get you involved this way. Otherwise, it is going to be me rambling. Yeah. Well, blah, blah, blah about this and blah blah. blah, right. blah, blah. Yep. So was Good Boys as a younger super bad as was kind of expected or portrayed in the trailers? Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> That's nice. I, it, it, it honestly, it's it really is. Um, it it really comes down to the shock factor of seeing these young kids saying and doing some of the stuff that's in that movie. Also, the the ignorance that's played up on the fact that they're young kids and they you know like oh they end up looking at uh, you know porn on the internet yeah. or pulling out like their parents' toys and they're a bunch of like adults entertainment toys dildos yeah. and anal beads and all that sort of stuff it's um there's some really good jokes rinsed out of the idea which i really thought but at the same time it's one of those movies where because i'd seen the trailer it kind of some of the best jokes were in that yeah, trailer which is unfortunate um you know and i hadn't seen the trailer because i'd seen the trailer on the internet i think i ended up seeing the trailer because it was at a movie i went to to oh, begin yeah. with that was the first time i think i saw it which is how i ended up telling you about it i think um so that's kind of unfortunate too in a sense but it was still fun like it was, it's very what you expect and yeah to answer your question it's pretty much like super bad but with younger kids i mean they've even got this scene in the convenience still trying to get alcohol and all this sort of stuff yeah. played differently but was it with a mclovin id no no oh we didn't talk about no. that no. yeah there's that, <laughs> that guy that actually got arrested for having the McLovin idea. I forgot about that. Um, yeah, but somehow he got served at a bar with it. Yeah, well, he had was an it actual. At a bar or at a yeah, it was at a bar. He had an actual ID, but his age was twenty, and the the, 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 the age there was twenty one, so yeah. he shouldn't have been served. So either the bartender just thought he looked old enough and didn't ask for an ID, or he got sent, served by the ID. It was not until he was leaving the cops asked him for ID. And he went and pulled out his actual ID, but they saw the fake ID in his wallet, yeah. and he got arrested. And then they got on the internet, and then Seth Rogen tw- tw- retweeted it and said, "My work here is done." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> typical Seth Rogen fashion. Yeah. Probably oh. laughing like his usual laugh. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't do yeah, it. I can't do it either. I think I used to be able to do it, but mm. I can't anymore. <laughs> nice try. I digress. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, so you saw the New Zealand animated movie Mosley? Yeah, so it was made by Hoo Hoo Studios, which is a New Zealand studio. They did um, Buzz and Poppy, if you remember that yep. TV yep. series in the 90s. For anyone who's listening to this overseas, I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. Um, Buzz and Poppy was just like this kid's show and um, it was quite successful and it was like quite a lot of episodes. I think they made like a, 100 episodes or something yeah, quite least, crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, and so they, this is like their first ever proper feature they've made one of the small feet smaller feature before but they're they don't this is their proper ever got an actual release um it's doing quite well like people are quite enthused about it there's talent who've worked on big movies from overseas so the writer director voice actor is the voice actor for the main character and his daughter plays the the small um thoroughfant which is the creatures that are in the movie um uh, he's worked on like big films overseas. The editors worked for like Pixar and um, oh. Big Sky. Uh, was it Big Sky that does um, uh, the Blue Sky? Sorry, that does um, yep. uh, like the um, Ice Age movies and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's it's not perfect, but the, for the budget and for the ambition, it's really good. Some great voice ta- voice talent in New Zealand: um, Lucy Lawless, um, Rhys Darby. Um, Tim Morrison, um, yeah, it's you know, if you've got kids, kind of between five and ten, to probably really good thing to see. That people would have might have taken their kids over the holidays as an alternative mm. to the other big movies that have come out. Um, it was nice to see New Zealand feature film um, animated. It's the first proper featured film release. There's been there was one that was a festival release a few years ago, but it's the first proper theatrical release since. Um, Fort Rock Flats yeah. and Fort Rock Flats wasn't even made here in New Zealand it was made in Australia so, yeah. um, which is so weird that we didn't animate a film, New Zealand feature film um, it was actually animated in Sydney um, but uh, yeah definitely really good um, people can see what they want to see in it I think as yeah. far as like a narrative um, okay. I saw one review that said it was about vegeta- vegetarianism I was like that's interesting I can see where they came from like yeah. it's about because of by the way the creatures are treated by humans Um I don't think that was the intent, but you could uh, argue that as well. Okay. Um, and it was backed by a Chinese studio, so this is going to be a big release in China. That's really, really, really pushing it. So the New Zealand release is it's great for them. It's good that it's been so widespread. Yeah. And that's that same editor was really a key part of getting it out, getting word out there, um, and promoting, getting it promoted and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it does in China. I think that's okay. their, their big market. 
Now, you went and saw Blinded by the Light. Were you revved up like a deuce in the middle of the night? Different song. That's no. not where it was. Good, good attempt. Uh, I see where you're going with that one. Uh, you know, it's about Bruce Springsteen. Well, specifically, it's the inspiration on a uh, Pakistani teenager in uh, in the late 80s in Luton. Um, it's semi-autobiographical. It's based on the actual writer's um, life. Um he was an actual Pakistani teenager living in Luton, and some of it's true and some of it's not. But a, a friend of his in school introduced him to um, Bruce Springsteen and realized that the songs all really spoke to him and where he was in his life and where he was living. You know, Springsteen's talking about Asbury Park in New Jersey, but mm-hmm. realistically, it's universal to the point of living in a small town. Yeah. And. Um, he goes to basically goes on this journey and it's a really good movie i really enjoyed it i didn't think i going into it i would um but it was really well performed and really heartfelt and like you can see that the actual the the, the baseline story that's underneath it all that was is true mm-hmm. um rings through you know and um it's really about his struggle for his self-identity um his clashes with his family over what he wants in his life um and yeah and also the racial oppression of the late 80s in that area although it still probably exists i i i would be shocked Uh, horribly again it shouldn't but it probably does um so yeah i definitely recommend it all right uh you went and saw the brad pitt movie ad astro yeah was he like matt damon and signed some shit up or no completely different completely different it's it's more like it was more like apocalypse now in space oh wow um it really is i've i've equated it as a journey up river him traveling across space is as a journey that essentially is like like apocalypse now and it's kind of set up in the same way because he's tasked by his military seniors in this case because it's like a space military um to find his colonel kurtz really which is just happens to be in this case his father um who's vanished and they don't know what's happened but there's a signal being sent out which could destroy all of human life Mm -hmm. um and realistically you go in the problem is i think the first trailer was probably more accurate to what the movie is the second trailer was very actiony if you went in and saw the second trailer and you went in expecting a lot of action you're probably going to be very disappointed there's some good moments of action don't get me wrong but they're few and far between and it's very much like apocalypse now in that sense you know okay. you get a, like a, this bit of a, a little bit of action scene and then it's a lot of dialogue and situational making your way up the river yeah um so that's the best thing i can equate it to someone else said that to me i didn't think of this like i i hadn't put those two things together but as soon as they said it though i was like i just it just talked to my head and i was like that is so accurate it <laughs> really is it's it's apocalypse now in space yeah um i i if you like Apocalypse Now, then you'll probably enjoy it. Like, it's that same story, but in space. It's it's Fast and Furious as is to Point Break. Yeah. Ad Astra is we, to Apocalypse Now. Was, was there any mention of napalm burning in the morning? No, there wasn't. Oh, no. what a shame. Space napalm. Lost opportunity. <laughs> space napalm. Love, it, love the smell, smell of space napalm in the morning. Yeah. If I can smell it, it's in space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Rambo First Blood, I've got to ask, did he draw last, blood first? Last blood. It was last blood, not first blood. I said last blood. You said first blood. Did I? Yeah, oh, all right. Rambo, last blood. blood. Did he draw blood first then? Uh, no. Ah. The blood was drawn on him, which is why he seeks revenge. Mm. It is a terrible film. It is by far the worst of the Rambos, which is probably not... No, that probably is still saying a lot. Um, the general gist is that he has retired officially. Um, the last, if you remember, he was... I think he was in Burma, I think it was and he killed a bunch of dudes and uh, instead he's gone back to the states his father had a farm which was being looked after by um he had like a, um, a housekeeper slash support person and yeah. she lived on the property and she had a family and they're still living there looking after the farm and he's come back and he's basically in his ptsd state um digging tunnels all over the farm which is kind of weird it's not very well explained in that sense if it explained it like he was doing it because it's keeping his mind busy and Mm. he didn't have to think about the atrocities of war it probably would have played a little bit um but realistically it just seems like an expectation of what they're going to use these tunnels for a big battle sequence then which is exactly what they do um the general gist is that the 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 woman that's been looking after the house she has a daughter and the daughter wants to find her estranged dad in mexico she goes to mexico and gets um she finds her dad who doesn't want anything to do with her which was a surprise um but that her friend sells her off to some um human traffickers yeah and then rainbow goes on a quest for revenge um 
It's basically it in a nutshell. That's literally it. I've okay. told you the entire plot, and basically you just expect chaos to happen, and it's really bad. What is really sad about the whole thing is that in the first 10 minutes, there's actually an idea for a film, which I probably would have been much more happier watching. Um, the opening is a sequence is about uh, Rambo got tracking some people through a flash storm that's up on a mountain, and they've been hiking, and he's tracking down like a husband, wife, and daughter. Mm-hmm. He saves the daughter, and the two, the parents die. The, the He finds the mother already dead. She's been washed away. Um, and the husband doesn't believe him that she's dead and goes off by mm-hmm. himself, even though he tells him not to. Um, and then the Indian ends up lashing himself, his horse, because he's on a horse, yep. and the girl to a tree while a big flash flood comes through. Mm-hmm. And I totally would watch a movie where he was just like tracking people and having to deal with the consequences of these sorts of outcomes because it kind of ties into this thing that he's unlike war where he's kind of involved in it he's actually having to deal with some human trauma on like the sort of level yeah and there's a whole movie that was be real interesting there and it's like literally the first time movie never really oh, wow. you, you get a little bit of a hint about it when the like the girl before she goes to mexico kind of talks about it and he kind of has a thought about it and then that's it and yeah. it's never really ever discussed again it's not really part of the story it's like it was just a setup to get him in the movie and it's like i'd rather watch that like it was much more interesting like wow okay so, yeah no don't, no i would not suggest seeing rambo all me. right uh joker yeah There's a lot of controversy around this, joker is a lot of controversy. um i enjoyed it i didn't love it i i wasn't like wowed by it um it is dark but it's 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 a tonal darkness that you kind of have to experience um even i you know i went and saw it with some of our flatmates and they both said that they thought about walking out of, you know, at a mm. point in the movie just because it was too bleak. Um, they both agreed the craft of it was amazing. It is a very mm. well-made film. Um, the thing that kept me hooked is something I want to talk about, but I don't because it would be a spoiler. So um, I just said that there are there is there is some underlying things that perhaps you don't see at first value that perhaps is worth looking into. Um, and uh yeah it's it's joaquin phoenix is amazing um it's a great cast it's well crafted it's well written it's just it may not be for everyone that's just Mm. a simple truth um but it's doing excuse me it's doing really really well i don't think you need to hear me to know that it's it's probably going to pass a billion dollars worldwide it's at seven or eight hundred million already so um, it beat out two movie, new movies this week for... Oh, I know, it didn't beat it. It was, no, it was number two in the United States this week, but only just behind the new Maleficent and just ahead of Zombieland, which yep. wasn't expected to do as well as it did. So, um, you know, it's still making a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, now, Gemini Man, Will Smith faces the Fresh Prince. That's pretty much it. Um, I... I saw it in a high frame rate. It was really awesome um, seeing in that form. The movie is very generic, but good. I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. It was exactly what I wanted, um, exactly what I needed for the, when I sat down to watch it. Um, uh, other people I've talked to not enjoyed it as much. Just simple truth. Everyone's taste. I think I just was exactly what I needed at the time. Um, the aging, the aging thing that they've done, the, the creation's wholly CG. It's not um, the way that, say, they've done it in... Um, so I can say like the Marvel films or um, you know with Sam Jackson where they basically yeah. had either him or someone else merged together and then a bit of CG added to adjust. Yeah, Will Smith and this is complete CG. It's all oh. over the place though. Like there's motion capture and that's it. So it's yeah. motion capture Will Smith, but the the actor he's playing is, is completely CG. There's moments where it's really good, and then there's moments where it just looks really bad, and then okay. there's these moments in between where a bit uncanny valley. <clears throat> there's a scene in broad daylight near the end where it doesn't even look like him at all. Yeah. There's a scene early. There's some scenes in earlier on where it's uncanny, like it looks like Will Smith from 1994. Oh wow! You know, so like it, it's um, it's it's worth seeing for that spectacle, and I did enjoy seeing it in a high frame rate. I've said this before, but seeing Hobbit in 48 frames, um compared to uh standard 24 was silly because it was a fantasy film and just took me out of the reality yeah. this is a real reality set film it's shot mostly on location so the it added a sense of realism to it in a high frame rate so i yeah. kind of enjoyed it for that sense and um the action was pretty good like there's some really good action sequences too and um yeah yeah good cast all right do you want to talk about your high frame rate question that you'd oh yeah to the cinema i have no about? idea what high frame rate exactly i saw it so the film is uh, available in up to 120 frames a second 
and um, when I went into the cinema, I asked them what is the frame rate, and the guy goes, I don't know, I think it's it goes the projector goes up to ninety something, and I was like ninety six because it's obviously double forty eight, yeah. and he goes, oh yeah, probably, and I was like, okay, cool. So I sent an email to Event Cinemas afterwards because I'm that type of person, um, <laughs> and said, uh, "What was the, I went to the screening? This is what I went to. This is the time in this cinema, and what screening was it?" And I didn't get a response back. And then five days later, I got like a a, a generic email back where I, I saw the t- the headline was the subject I put. And I was like, "Oh, cool, they've answered." And instead, it had no answer. It was just a, like a survey saying, "We we answered your question. Has this answer been <laughs> helpful? Yes or no?" And so I was like, "No." And then it asked me for a reason. I was like, "You did not answer the question <laughs> at all." So yeah, I still don't know. So safe to say, you still haven't got a response. Yeah. It could have been forty-eight. It could have been what's the other sixty? It's ninety-six or one hundred and twenty, but probably not one hundred and twenty considering anything. I, I I could go back into the cinema and see if one of the other staff members knew because they were screening what they were screening in. But I think the longer I leave it, the more chances that the staff won't know. Yeah. So it's I think it's still screening in high frame right there right now. So I could yeah. go ask. Now you also saw Hustlers. Yeah, Hustlers was really good. I'm um, really, really. I was really impressed with it. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Great cast. Um, the story I already knew about, obviously, I'd read the story that led to it. It's it's semi-based on it. It's not entirely accurate to the original events, as a lot of these, they're more like based on true events, these movies. And I'm glad they do this now. They used to just say based on a true story, even when it wasn't. Now yeah. it's just based on true events. It's a much more accurate title. Yeah, um, yeah um, just really good. I, I, I honestly went in thinking it was going to be either like just silly or because the way the trailers have been playing it up the idea of the story but it was actually a lot of drama and emotional heft to it and it was very well thought out and the pacing was good well shot um and legitimately funny too like yeah. there's some good moments of humor and levity in it as well so um the cast really made it um yeah definitely recommend very interesting okay. story and um, well you touched on it briefly earlier but we'll close with zombieland double tap yeah, um, you have this big issue about sequels that come out like 10 years after or whatever, you know, you go like yeah, Anchorman 2 and all that stuff. Zombieland, in theory, is like that, but it isn't like that. It's totally so consistent to the original that if it had come out two years later, it would have been fine. Um, 10 years later, it's the same, it, it stays consistent, which is really impressive. They make meta jokes about the whole fact that it's been so long. Like the first lines of dialogue in the movie are literally um, Eisenberg voiceover saying, welcome back to Zombieland. We're glad you wanted to come back for a second round. You know, like, you know, I <laughs> can't believe you still wanted to, but hey, here we are, like kind of taking like a nod, nod, wink, wink kind of yeah. thing. There's a joke partway through the movie with the new one of the new characters, Madison, that's played by Zoe Dutch. And she's like this kind of bimbo-y character who's been living in a fridge for 10 years years <laughs> she literally has um i'm not kidding like that's how she survived the zombies so yeah. she, she comes out and lives in a shopping mall and she like she makes jokes about dawn of the dead and all that sort of stuff um but she makes this comment about the driving and she makes this comment about like i'd oh, really great i had this really great idea about like you just like use your phone and you like message a stranger and they come and pick you up in the car <laughs> and you're and i was like so i was like clearly this is a joke at the expense of like uber and all this stuff and all the other characters are like that's really stupid and like emma stone's like yeah and then she's like and then they put out like water and lollies and stuff for you. she's <laughs> like yeah that's exactly what my parents always said get in a car with a stranger who has lollies like that <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> i was like that but but obviously this is under the knowledge of what we know as opposed to the characters who never experienced this yeah. because zombie land happened in 2009 and they never had and uber this is still t- years later within the same universe, universe. So, I, so there's like there's these clever jokes on there that are really funny there's been a lot of backlash because if you remember back to the original zombie land is like i want to say in 10 years the society has become a lot more uh, aware of um misogyny yeah right and the thing is as i said it's totally consistent to 10 years ago so the characters continue to act in the same way and yet we've changed the society and yeah. so some of the jokes for some people are not going to fly i think there's there's a there's a there's a scene uh you if you've seen the trailer I'm, I'm i'm not meaning to ruin this but there's a scene uh about midway through the movie and if you've seen the trailer you know that there's like a, a double up of like characters luke wilson and um thomas middleditch play these characters that are very much like the ones that we already know and he makes a joke about parking they're making this comment about parking in driveways, yeah. but it's clearly a euphemism for like staying with the, the hostess who's played by Rosario Dawson. Like, 
who, who's getting to park in the yeah, driveway yeah, is yeah. not parking in the <laughs> yeah. driveway. And it's a double entendre. Exactly. Yeah. And it, like this, that's not going to fly in some of the society today, no. I think. But you've got to separate with the fact that these are characters who have not gone through this 10-year period yeah, of growth. They've, they've gone through their own 10 years of, within their universe, yes. not ours. And that there are still douchebags out there who would say these things. Yeah. So, you know, I, I kind of take it on face value, but it definitely won't sit well with some audience members, no. I'm sure. And there's not just that, because there's also the character dynamic between... Um, uh, uh, Madison, Zoe Dutch's character, Emma Stone's um, Wichita, and um, Jesse Eisenberg's Columbus. Like the three of them obviously have this dynamic that could be portrayed very awkwardly if you look at it in a certain light. So I, yeah, it'd be very interesting in that respect. So, so yeah. But the movie was good. So for me personally, I enjoyed it. Okay, closing question is does Woody Harrison get his Twinkies? No. Actually, this funny thing. I was waiting for a Twinkies joke. There's not a single Twinkies joke in there. Oh, wow. Um, not the, even like a hostess as a whole? No. Or? I thought... Because they the start of the movie, they break into the White House. So I thought they were going to have a joke where he finds like a galley full of like supplies and yeah. there's going to be like a box of Twinkies. I think it may have been licensing or something. They didn't mention okay. it. literally not mentioned once. Oh, I was wow. quite surprised by that entirely considering how much, how important it was to the character in the first yeah. one. Um, he never makes... Because he got excited single. to see the hostess drive. Truck, it was yeah. full of um, ding dongs or something. I like think that. we've got to think. Remember, in the real world, Hostess went out of business and got rebought by a different company. Yeah, and maybe so they were like, they were like, we don't want to be involved with the zombies. Yeah, it probably. <laughs> Which is sense. silly because it's only promotional for them. Like, I, I there was nothing bad about Hostess snack cakes being involved with no. with zombie land. People were like, oh, he's the Twinkie guy. Like, <laughs> it was like oh, the only shame. One, the, the reference to that in Ghostbusters. That's one giant Twinkie. Yeah, like, yeah. ask him about the Twinkie. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully it wasn't too much of a ramble. You asked some good questions. Now we've come to everybody's favorite part of the show i love how you said that while rolling your eyes yeah well i was trying to think of what to say without screwing it up <laughs> no but it's it more again. about you thinking about it's not really my favorite at all why do we do <laughs> this <laughs> we've got to do something fun <laughs> it is funny but yeah. like it just depends on how much energy we've got left at yeah. the point so, when we've got short ones we've actually had a pretty short one this time i think so yeah maybe it's not so bad i don't know but anyway yeah we, we, let, let's pick some movie titles some movies but badly yeah but badly uh where are we films but badly watch. Right. I keep seeing those ones on the internet and they're just... They're so good. They're so good. It's like that. those people would be better at this game than us. Maybe, but you, when, Maybe. You, when you're not having to do it under the time pressure we've yeah. got, like it's much easier to come up with with, with um, quite much more wittier ones, I think. Occasionally we come up with a gem, I think. Sometimes we end up just like vaguely describing the film in the most mm. obscene way possible. Oh, he's, yeah, got, right. he's got one. Let's go there. Let me think about this. I think I've seen a bad description of this too, but I can't remember what it is. No. <laughs> so I could easily kind of cheat. Cheater. But, so I've got to try to think of something <laughs> my own. Here we go. All right. Boy finds out the truth about his family. Boy finds the truth out about his family. Oh, no, see, this is nice. This could be a lot of things. I'm saying it these very quickly. Some of are real obvious and it's right in front of me. I'm like, no. Um... I'll kind of give you a clue. It's it's not the plot of the whole movie, if that helps. No. Okay, that's not going to help me. Ten seconds. Mm, boy finds the truth. Isn't it? God, this could be, like, there's no one particular movie coming to my head, so I don't, I honestly don't know how much two, one. one. Nah. It's The Empire Strikes Back. Ah. Now I remember you, you, the one you were talking about that you read on the internet. Yeah, yeah. It's such a series of down notes. Yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah, I, was, I kind of thought that might have been too on the nose, but I guess it was, I guess, perfect enough. I mean, you guys be the judge if you think you could have got that from... That, that That's really the outcome of that movie. When you yeah. think about it, I mean, aside from Han Solo, like, realistically, like, Luke realizes everything to do with his family. Like, that lays his sister, that Darth Vader's yeah. his father, he finds out the truth about his family. And yeah. It's kind of true. And we, what, who people are. I mean, it's, granted, it's not the whole plot point, but it no, it's, a, works, it's a big yeah. bulk, bulk of the the um, the thing. Uh, okay, um, school teacher goes on a worldwide trek to find a box. School teacher goes on a worldwide trek to find a box. See, first thing that would come to mind would be Magic School Bus, <laughs> <laughs> the movie. The movie. Um, school teacher to find a magic box. I didn't put magic in there. I just said box. You, you put magic in Did there. I? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's because I said magic school bus. Yeah, it is. The school teacher goes on a worldwide trek to find a box. 
going to be? Five, Could six, be Breaking six. Bad, maybe, no. or El Camino. No, it's um, good. Three, two, no. one. <laughs> you can what do we got? You can be this. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's funny that you put magic in there. I was like, I was like, that's kind of funny that you did that because I was thinking, I was thinking, yeah, you mm. <laughs> didn't use that word, but that could have been, that could apply. It technically, is it? Yeah. Okay. Robot spends its life trying to save the world. It can't be Iron Giant. No. Not AI. No. Robot. Spends its life. It's not Terminator 2, is it? No, it's not Terminator. <laughs> well, not the first one, the second one. Uh, robot. Spends its life. It's not Wally. It is Wally. Oh. That was well done. I had to think about that for quite a while because I was like, I'm just thinking of robot movies. Basically. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you couldn't say anything else other than robot, really. Anyone would describe yeah. it as such. I, I, I was thinking there, there calculator was, on wheels. Yeah, there was, <laughs> there was, funny enough, one of those online as well. There was a joke, joke thing like Bob oh, Lyon. That's right. I think there was yeah. too, yeah. Something to do with fat humans. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's what it was. Yeah. Uh, all right. So um, in this movie, the main character uh, enjoys smashing stuff and um, likes bathroom products. Be Fight Club? Damn it! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Three seconds. I really thought the bathroom products might throw you. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how I got that. <laughs> That's, That's amazing. A shock. That was amazing. Especially so quickly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I guess it was the bathroom products. It was the bathroom products. I, mean, I really thought they were the back. main character like smashing stuff. I'd be like, ooh. There's the bathroom products. Ooh. If I hadn't done that, yeah. Wow. Well done. That was really good. Okay. Slave becomes bounty hunter for a rich man. It's not Django, is it? More detail, please. Django Unchained. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> it was the slave thing. If you hadn't said slave, yeah. I probably wouldn't have worked that out. Yeah, well, I was originally thinking slave becomes bounty hunter for rich white man, but then I thought that's probably more on the nose. Yeah, I think if you've gone with slave, I think I think that's actually... I wanna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you out on this, Ryan. I think that might have been an accurate description. <laughs> yeah, you've seen Django, have you? Yeah, I do. Django. I have, yeah. yeah that's, that helps. <laughs> that's why I was like, I've seen it, but I can't think of anything at the uh, time. Okay. And, and that was pretty much it. Just slave becomes bounty hunter. <laughs> Good foley going there. <laughs> it's just rustling through the leaves. Some thunder. <laughs> um, okay. Mm. In this movie, uh, a man is in the wrong place, but it ends up being the right place for everyone involved. In the wrong place, but the right place for everyone involved. This is not a good, bad description because it's not really giving you any details. This is why I don't like it. For some reason, phone booth is coming to mind. Ooh, no, but you're on the right track. This is the wrong, man in the wrong place, but the right place for everyone else. No, that's the only thing that's coming to mind. It's still... Five, four, um, three, two, one. No, I got nothing. What do we got? Everyone's favourite. Die Hard. Oh, of course. I really was struggling uh, with that. I was like, far out. I could think that of is actually million, a good description, though. I could f- figure out a million different ideas for that one. And I honestly was like, he's in the wrong place. And everyone else is also in the wrong place. But then because he's there, it's, it's good for them. Yeah. Like, I was like, man, it makes sense to me. Yeah. Wow. I think on that, it's four to two to, me, to you. Oh, wasn't it three points per thing? No, it's that? one point each. Oh, I one believe. point. Yeah. Oh, okay, so sorry. One for, one for stumping, one for getting it right. right. So, right. yeah, so you guessed two right and stumped me with two, so you get four, and I guessed one right and stumped you with one, so four to two. Oh. Yeah, we, we got a shit point system here. We, we, we were even I mean, We were even before, weren't we, until, yeah. the, until that last round. So that was it was good. We were even to yeah. that last round. I, I think the points in this are like whose line. They just don't matter. It doesn't really matter. I haven't gotten <laughs> any of them up. It's more about the laughs. It's about how bad the descriptions are really more than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> well, I think we've come to the end of our episode today. Yep. So we should probably leave it there with all our news. Hopefully we didn't go on too long for you. Much shorter than usual. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah, despite there was a lot to talk about. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about. We got, through, we got through a lot, I think. 
Um, so yeah, so make sure that you follow us on all the usual channels: Facebook, YouTube, Pod Podbean. Podbean, yep. And yep. Anywhere else? No, that's pretty much. No, it. that's about it. No, I didn't even put Twitter or Instagram. Twitter, no, yet. no, I didn't. We no. won't be on there yet at no. all. I'll probably eventually. Yeah, yeah. one day maybe if we one get day. to three figures. We're just got to double, so maybe three figures will <laughs> will go to another social media. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Um, so yeah, this is the end of episode ten. Hope you enjoyed it. Yes, yeah, as usual. Yep, as Ryan said, like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, share it with yes, your friends. Yeah, share it And, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you for episode 11. Yep. See you. See you.